Here are two reasons companies fail. They only do more of the same, or they only do what's new. To me, the real, real solution to quality growth is figuring out the balance between two activities, exploration and exploitation. Both are necessary, but it can't be too much of a good thing. Consider Fawcett. I'm actually old enough to remember them. Fawcett was a fantastic company. They were born deep in the Swedish forest, and they made the best mechanical calculators in the world. Everybody used them. And what did Fawcett do when the electronic calculator came along? They continued doing exactly the same. In six months, they went from maximum revenue, and they were gone. Gone. To me, the irony about the Fawcett story is hearing about the Fawcett engineers who had bought cheap, small electronic calculators in Japan that they used to double-check their calculators. <laughs> Fawcett did too much exploitation. But exploration can go wild, too. A few years back, I worked closely alongside a European biotech company. Let's call them OncoSearch. The company was brilliant. They had applications that promised to diagnose, even cure, certain forms of blood cancer. Every day was about creating something new. They were extremely innovative. And the mantra was, when we only get it right, or even, we want it perfect. The sad thing is, before they became perfect, even good enough, they became obsolete. OncoSearch did too much exploration. I first heard about exploration and exploitation about 15 years ago, when I worked uh, as a visiting scholar at Stanford University. And the founder of the ideas is Jim March. And to me, the power of the ideas is its practicality. Exploration. Exploration is about coming up with what's new. It's about search, it's about discovery. It's about new products, it's about new innovations. It's about changing our frontiers. Our heroes are people who have done exploration. Madame Curie, Picasso, Neil Armstrong, Sir Edmund Hillary, etc. From my, I come from Norway, all our heroes are explorers. And they deserve to be. We all know that exploration is risky. We don't know the answers, we don't know if we're going to find it, and we know that the risks are high. Exploitation is the opposite. Exploitation is taking the knowledge we have and making good better. Exploitation is about making our trains run on time. It's about making good products faster and cheaper. Exploitation is not risky in the short term, but if we only exploit, it's very risky in the long term. And I think we all have memories of the you know, famous pop groups who keep singing the same songs again and again until they become obsolete or even pathetic. That's the risk of exploitation. So if we take a long-term perspective, we explore. If we take a short-term perspective, we exploit. Small children, they explore all day. All day is about exploration. As we grow older, we explore less because we have more knowledge to exploit on. The same goes for companies. Companies become, by nature, less innovative as they become more competent. And this is, of course, a big worry to CEOs. And I hear very often questions uh, phrased in different ways. For example, how can I both effectively run and reinvent my company? Or how can I make sure that our company changes before we become obsolete or are hit by a crisis? So doing one well is difficult. Doing both well at the same time is art. Pushing both exploration and exploitation. So one thing we've found is that uh, only about 2% of companies are able to effectively explore 
and exploit at the same time, in parallel. But when they do, the payoffs are huge. So we have lots of great examples. We have Nestle creating Nespresso. We have Lego going into animated films. Toyota creating the hybrids. Unilever pushing into sustainability. There are lots of examples, and the benefits are huge. Why is balancing so difficult? I think it's difficult because there are so many traps that keep us where we are. So I'll talk about two, but there are many. So let's talk about the perpetual search trap. We discover something, but we don't have the patience or the persistence to get at it and make it work. So instead of staying with it, we create something new. But the same goes for that, and we're in a vicious circle of actually coming up with ideas but being frustrated. OncoSearch was a good example. A famous example is, of course, Xerox. But we don't only see this in companies. We see this in the public sector as well. We all know that any kind of effective reform of uh, education, research, healthcare, even defense, takes 10, 15, maybe 20 years to work. But still, we change much more often. We really don't give them the chance. Another trap is the success trap. Fawcett fell into the success trap. They literally held the future in their hands, but they couldn't see it. They were simply so good at making what they loved doing that they wouldn't change. We are like that too. When we know something well, it's difficult to change. Bill Gates has said, success is a lousy teacher. It seduces us into thinking we cannot fail. That's the challenge with success. So I think there are some lessons, and I think they apply to us, and they apply to our companies. So the first lesson is uh, get ahead of the crisis. And any company that's able to innovate is actually able to also buy an insurance in the future. Netflix, they could so easily have been content with earlier generations of uh, distribution, but they always, and I think they will always, keep pushing for the next battle. I see other companies who say, I'll win the next innovation cycle, whatever it takes. Second one, think in multiple time scales. I'll share a chart with you, and I think it's a wonderful one. Any company we look at, taking a one-year perspective and looking at the valuation of the company, innovation typically accounts for only about 30%. So when we think one year, innovation isn't really that important. Move ahead, take 10-year perspective on the same company, suddenly innovation and the ability to renew accounts for 70%. But companies can't choose. They need to fund the journey and live the long term. Third. Invite challenge. I don't think it's possible for any of us to be able to balance exploration and exploitation by ourselves. I think it's a team sport. I think we need to allow challenging. I think uh, the mark of a great company is being open to be challenged, and the mark of a good corporate board is to constructively challenge. I think that's also what good parenting is about. Last one, be skeptical of success. Maybe it's useful to think back at the old triumph marches in Rome, when the generals, after a big victory, were given their celebration. Riding into Rome on the carriage, they always had a companion whispering in their ear, remember, you're only human. So I hope I've made the point. Balancing exploration and exploitation has a huge payoff, but it's difficult and we need to be conscious. I want to just point out two questions that I think are, are useful. First question is uh, looking at your own company. In which areas do you see that the company is at the risk of falling into success traps, of just going on autopilot? And what can you do to challenge? Second question is, when did I explore something new last? And what kind of effect did it have on me? 
Is that something I should do more of? In my case, yes. So let me leave you with, with this. Whether you're an explorer by nature, or whether you tend to exploit what you already know, don't forget the beauty is in the balance. Thank you.